Over the past 31 years, the Spates Coast to Coast has grown into the iconic New Zealand adventure, a race more symbolic of the Kiwi spirit than any other. The Coast to Coast inspires everyday people to strive for a superb personal challenge and brings together elite multi-sport athletes from all around the world. Since 1983, the Spates Coast to Coast has been the catalyst for over 20,000 people to cross the South Island, west coast to east, 243 kilometres over the mighty Southern Alps. Each February, up to 800 competitors gather nervously on Kumara Beach on the wild Tasman Sea and set off to cycle 140 kilometres, run 36 kilometres, including the 1,000 metre high Goat Pass, and paddle a massive 67 kilometres down the Waimakariri River, taking in New Zealand's Grand Canyon, the Waimak Gorge. Finally tired but exuberant, they touch the prized sands of Sumner Beach. The Spates Coast to Coast really geared up two days ago with the registration at Kumara Racecourse. We're having a fantastic time here at uh, Kumara Racecourse and um, everybody's as excited as hell. It's a time for friends to catch up and swap stories, strap up their legs for the mountain run and enjoy a great West Coast meal. Not to mention a drop or two of the best beer in the country. <laughs> The, the best things about this race is the course. I mean, the, as far as a one-day course goes, it is definitely the the best course I think in the world. Um, especially the the mountain run and the paddle. They're you know they're out of this world, and when you go racing there or training there, then um, you know it, it's just a, a great place to to spend a day out. So um, there's also a, a great community of people associated with the race, and I uh, look forward to catching up with a few, few old faces every year. There's the course, the atmosphere and the race itself, it's definitely the race to win. So New Zealand is one of the most beautiful places, it's just amazing um, forest and amazing rivers here and uh, coast to coast course is definitely one of the most beautiful uh, race courses what I have seen. Oh, well, we, uh, you know, we both sort of spoke about it and decided that we were going to uh, you know, do the, the uh, one day coast to coast and uh, obviously you know, we row together, we compete against each other all the time so we thought well, let's uh, make a bit of a race out of it. And, yeah. Yeah, if, of... Even if we said it wasn't going to be a race, it'll, it'll <laughs> always turn into a race. We're too competitive. <laughs> well this will be the tenth time I've entered. I'm down to two legs at the moment and the first, the first leg off the beach I've got to take a leg and then dump it at the cycle, so I don't get to use that again. Yeah, this is the tenth time we've been at Kumara, so um, and missed one in between. So yeah, 11 years. So yeah, we're back to do it again. Uh, cycling up to the Deception Footbridge, I've got to change into my other leg, which is a normal everyday leg for an amputee now. Unfortunately, it's got carbon fibre, but it's also got a hunk of stainless steel in it or aluminium, which makes it a heavy leg. Uh, always fascinated with the coast to coast and come across here the first time I think maybe in 01 from memory and uh, sight unseen went across the course and just loved it, uh, fell in love with it. I think I placed 10th in the one day and uh, and came back a couple of years later for a fourth which was my best result uh, in the multi-sport race. Quite I usually carry a leg over with me but I'm not going to be able to have this leg because I can't take it with me or well, I won't take it with me. Yeah, um, yeah really also, enjoying going forwards for once instead of backwards. But, um, Definitely going down the white water is a lot more fun and, and just uh, going through some of the tricky passes and keeping in the boat yeah, it makes it quite enjoyable and quite entertaining at times. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and I'll change that leg and use that for the, for the run over the um, Deception Minger. Um, Even though it's a little corny just to enjoy myself and get out there, I had a, a big last year away overseas working on uh, Mad Max 4, the new production of uh, the Hollywood movie. and. Um, I missed racing a lot while I was away, so uh, hence the reason I came back this year to just enjoy myself. Uh, and then hopefully I'll find this league again the next day. <laughs> Somebody might nick it. And uh, I'll use that uh, for the run down to Mount White from the cycles at the main road. I think it's going to be a rerun of last year. I really do. I think we're going to see ushers first and in both men's and women's. I really do. So sort of contenders, I think there's obviously uh, Dougal Allen, three-time runner-up. There's um, Braden Curry and probably Sam Clark as well. So it's, uh, I think, uh, between the four of us, that'll, that'll probably decide the top three places. But And then never... I'll change in the kayak leg which I've made about three centimetres longer than my normal running leg. I mean, everyone knows Braden's going to try and smash the run. 
And the most amazing thing for 2013 has been the weather forecast. Man, we, I've never ever had a weather forecast as good as what we've got lined up for the weekend. We've got the biggest high over New Zealand I've ever seen at any race time. It's just stunning. We're going to have beautiful weather on Friday for the beginning of the uh, two day event. And on Saturday, a Norwest is going to pick up and just pump those guys, push those one dayers right across the island to Sumner. It's looking absolutely fa fantastic. Yesterday saw the first day of the two-day coast-to-coast get underway, with almost 500 participants from 21 countries heading off from Kamara Beach. They're racing as teams and as individuals, so there's an ideal challenge for all. Yesterday was a record-breaking day for Wanaka's Jess Simpson. Racing as an individual woman, Simpson announced her arrival on the multi-sport scene with a strong first cycle leg from the west coast to Atkins backed by a blindingly fast run over Goat Pass to Klondike Corner, which is nestled in the valley floor below the Alps. Simpson finished the day in fifth overall, setting a new women's two-day individual mountain run record of 3 hours 40 minutes, almost two minutes quicker than the 25-year-old record of 1988 winner Claire Parks. Simpson is new to kayaking, so it could be a challenge to hold on to her lead, though she does have the biking legs to make up time on the long road across the Canterbury Plains to the East Coast finish. Individual men's leader Seamus Meikle is determined to hold on to the lead today. The 27-year-old lives in Greymouth, so this is his backyard. Yesterday, Meikle got into a five-man breakaway on the 55km opening cycle. The bunch clocked a slick one hour 39 minutes and missed the course record by just a minute. Meikle then had a great run up the Deception River and over Goat Pass to Klondike Corner. Teams racing was also decisive. Steve McKinstry took over from his Forest Wines teammate Dan Bush in fifth place and stormed through the field to reach Klondike Corner in a clear first. Probably no surprise, as McKinstry's previously won the two-day individual race. Dan the man is handy on the bike and a South Island surf ski champion. The world's longest running multi-sport race also featured something new yesterday, with the introduction of a solo mountain run option. Hanma Springs' Nick Hirschfield was first among the men in a quick, slick 3 hours 10 minutes 42 seconds while Wellington's Genevieve Stark was first woman in 4 hours 5 minutes 23 seconds. Here we are on the start line of the 2013 Spates Coast to Coast Multisport World Championships. What a day of racing we have ahead as some of the world's best tackle this majestic race across the southern Alps of New Zealand and down the massive Waimakariri Gorge to Sumner in Christchurch, all in one day. Somewhere in the dark on Kumara Beach on the rugged west coast are the very best in the world with reigning world multi-sport champions Richard and Alina Usher and reigning adventure racing world champion Trevor Voice. Sharing the media limelight are London Olympic Games gold medal rowers Joe Sullivan and the big man Mahi Drysdale. The longest day isn't only the domain of the elite but also people who want to set themselves a personal challenge and knock off the iconic Kiwi event in one day. I was here in 2010 on this very spot. I almost got blown away by the wind and the rain and, and it was just total chaos and all of a sudden the race started and it wasn't really the race I had trained or, or prepared for. So uh, that was three years ago and today, um, today I'm back. The weather's nice and calm. I expect to do the real course and uh, oh, I'm really psyched for it. Really psyched. Mountain run. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to the kayak head. Hopefully we make it to the other end, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. That's the, plan. The, that's the goal. Yeah, it's my first coast to coast, so tick off the bucket list and see how it goes. So yep. looking forward to paddling that and being able to just chuck it in some of the uh, bigger rapids and, and go for it. So. Good. Sumner, here we come. <laughs> we'll be there <laughs> sometime. <laughs> is multi-sport royalty and defending champions Richard and Alina Usher. Between them, they have seven wins at the Spates Coast to Coast and were the first couple to win both titles on the same day last year. Oh, it's always a bit of apprehension. This kind of stage of the day, no one really knows what's going to happen. And just looking forward to getting this first run and, and bike out of the way and getting into the, the meat of the race, really. Yeah, I'm sure that the girls are going to push hard and especially Sophie, I think, is going to go well, so just see what happens, really.
Four minutes to the start. Could you please make your way back down onto the beach? Race please? director and multi-sport founder Robin Judkins preps the athletes, while the world's media are poised to capture the day's action. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. They're off. Just over 130 brave adventure junkies from eight countries are away on the longest day. And what a long day it'll be. Even this early, the world champs can easily be lost here. Miss the lead group and you can expect a 10 minute deficit going into the run. A near impossible position to come back from. Top contenders Usher, Sam Clark, Trevor Voice and Dougal Allen all look safe. Flavio Viana is the first of three Brazilians and leads the internationals. Olympic rowing champion Mahi Drysdale has had a strong run, but in the dark he's playing find and seek with his bike. Drysdale's challenge now is to get into a quick bunch and save his legs for the mountain run. He's in no man's land and will have to put in some serious effort to make the committed bunch ahead, which is home to two other world champions. There's defending champion Alina Usher, accompanied by reigning adventure racing world champion Sophie Hart. Expect an epic battle between these two, both with the spate's coast-to-coast -coast win to their name. Kumara is the last town competitors will pass through until they hit the outskirts of Christchurch. Now, hey, that's only 230 k's to go now. Denmark's Sia Svensson is one of the women shooting for the podium. With her cycling, kayaking and adventure racing experience, she's a top contender. This bunch containing the top women is flying. Look how hard they're pushing and how the bunch is stretched out. Someone's agenda up front is to catch the lead pack and cause some pain to those behind. Usher Hart's from Finland but now lives in Nelson, the same place as Dr Sophie Hart. We haven't seen top Brazilian contender Camila Nicolau who's previously placed seventh. Is she good enough to wedge onto the podium this year? Gold medalist Drysdale's extra effort in the dark has paid off. He's made the fast bunch so can settle in, rest his legs and fuel up for the 55 kilometre cycle to the foot of the Southern Alps. He's on the move through the pack, probably to cover his bases, so if it splits, he's at the sharp end. Also in this pack is multiple Australian Uncle Toby Surf Ironman champion Guy Andrews, who's a past top 10 here at the coast to coast. We're up with the leading group, which looks like an R&R sport peloton from here. History suggests that the Spates coast to coast winner needs to be in this bunch. The four likely contenders in there somewhere are Braden Curry, three times runner-up Dougal Allen, adventure racing world champion from Team Seagate Trevor Voice, and favourite five times winner Richard Usher, all Kiwis by the way. These guys will be pushing 300 watts of power versus 240 watts in the main pack behind. They may even spike to 330 if someone's trying to shake up the group. Let's cut now to the two-day race. The second day's racing started this morning at 7am from Klondike, the mid-race overnight camp. The two-day has started with a quick 15km ride to Mount White and leapt into the kayaks for a 67km paddle down the mighty Waimakariri, where they're now about to enter the gorge. Back to the Premier World Multisport Championships, Richard Usher is powering the bunch along. He's on the front forcing his opposition to push uncomfortable watts and taking the edge off their legs for the run. The leaders are into Atkins to transition onto the brutal 33 km mountain run. It's Allen, Curry, Clark, Usher and Voice in the top five. Also in the hunt, JJ Wilson, Graham Hill, Sam Manson, Dan Moore, Luke Vaughan and Hamish Fleming. Some of this group will have ridden beyond their ability and smashed their legs. Watch the pros run off into the distance. 
Dougal Allen is signalling his intent as one of the leaders, followed by Wilson, Curry, Manson, Hill, Voice, Moore and tail end Charlie in this pack, but not for long, Richard Usher. Braden Curry is the game changer, making the first significant break of the day. Curry's won the famous Rootburn Mountain Run in a record time in 2012, so he can't be underestimated by Usher, who's also a multiple Rootburn winner. By the looks of things, Clark, Usher, Allen, Voice and Manson are a minute down. Two thousand five two day winner Luke Vaughan has a lot of real estate between him and the leaders. How good are the lead women? They've made transition in the second bunch. That's Sophie Hart, Alina Usher, Elsa Rollinson, and on the back there's rowing royalty in Mahi Drysdale, who confesses to a fair bit of cycling as cross training. Drysdale, supported by fellow Olympic medalist and partner Juliet Haig, with his focus now set on the mountain run over the Southern Alps. 2011 Coast champion Sophie Hart leads the women's race, with Alina Usher second. The biggest challenge of Drysdale's race lies in the mountain leg, lugging his big frame over this highly technical mountain run. He needs to tag on to someone of similar speed who knows the course to cut the quickest route up to Goat Pass. It could save him up to 15 minutes simply by clever running. C.S. Venson's into the run followed by Emily Wilson, Camila Nicolau and veteran Rachel Cashin who's finished third in the past. Keep going Rex. Runners are spread out over the valley floor as they ford many rivers, bound over boulders and navigate their way to Goat Pass. It's not easy underfoot and sometimes it's easier to follow and concentrate on keeping it smooth. You can see the trail on the right of the river, then going into the bush. Our ground crew have found the men's race leader and no surprise it's a super hot curry. Now let's get this important split. Let's cut to Tim Pearson who's with the athletes. Good work Sam. Three minutes, 20 down. Good work, guys. Good work, Dougal. Three minutes. Over three minutes separate Curry from the chase group, so they won't want to give him much more time. The chasers are led by young Fokatane star Sam Clark, with Usher on his tail, then Alan and Voice. This isn't a run in the park and you need copious core strength for stability and endurance to bound, sidestep and pull yourself over rocks and through bush. Dan Moore's a manager at Outward Bound and maintaining a good pace in sixth place. Braden Curry comes into view at Doreen Creek, or Big Boulders, which is a milestone point before the push to the pass. Let's put the watch on him. It's not good news for Usher, Clark, Allen and Voice. They're four minutes down on Curry, who seems determined to break Usher's resolve. The next half hour is all up, up, up and will probably blow this bunch apart. Moore's next, followed by young star Sam Manson. Drinking is pure and simple at the coast and why not? when the alternatives to lug a couple of kilograms of hydration on your back. The kudos of leading international man goes to Brazilian Flavio Viana. The international men better watch out as the women's leader Sophie Hart isn't far behind. Hart's successes include wins at the Coast to Coast and World Adventure Race Championships as part of Team Seagate. She's fast and strong by any standards and a top 10 overall isn't out of the question. Hart's based in Nelson and is coached by multiple adventure racing world champion and Seagate captain Nathan Fave, who raced onto the coast podium in 1998 and 99, pipped by nine times champion Steve Gurney back then. Alina rushes in second, but with company, Elsa Rollinson of Wanaka.